Patrick, what does it mean to be an agent, and how does agency relate to free will? Okay, so we approach agency in a very simple way as being the relationship between my action and what happens in the outside world. So from my point of view, the agency refers to the capacity that adult humans and in fact most animals have of making actions which produce changes in the world outside. So the rat in the box that learns to press the lever to get a food pellet is an agent because it's able to have control over its own food supply. Now the interesting thing about human psychology is we all have a very strong subjective experience which is called the sense of agency. Mm. We have the feeling that we're in control. We get it all the time. You press the light switch, the lights come on, and you feel, I made the lights come on. <laughs> right. and, and we also know that the sense of agency is really important. So many psych psychiatric conditions and mental health problems are associated with a lack of a sense of agency or a reduced sense of agency. Mm. So sense of agency is really fundamental to our feeling of controlling and having our own lives. Mm. And the question that we've been asking is, What's the basis of the sense of agency in the human brain? So how do we know and how do we experience the fact that our action, pressing the light switch, causes the lights to come on? How does the brain make that connection? Okay, tell me some experiments. So we've done some quite simple experiments where the participant presses a button which produces a tone, a beep, after a short delay of perhaps 250 milliseconds. A quarter of a second. Right, so you press the button, you make the beep happen. So in that sense, you are the agent mm -hmm. over that beep. Mm -hmm. And we've used this very common thing in psychology of asking questions about when. So what are called chronometric questions, mental chronometry. When do you experience pressing the button? And when do you experience hearing the beep? And we've used Again, the method originally developed by Libet of using a rotating clock hand to indicate when you have a particular experience. So if you ask people when they experience pressing a button, they will give you a report based on the rotating clock hand and you can work out that they might experience pressing the button maybe a few milliseconds after the button actually goes down. But if you now ask them to press the button and you follow that button press with this beep a quarter of a second later, the experience of when they press the button changes and it shifts later in time towards the beep that their button press has oh, generated. Mm. You can do exactly the same thing the other way around. You can ask people, when do you hear the beep? And you start off by just playing them a beep, which just happens without them being the agent at all, so they're not moving at all. And they might say they experience the beep, let's say, a few milliseconds before it actually occurs. People sometimes make a little anticipation. But now we're going to ask people to be the agent, to make mm -hmm. the beep themselves. Press the button when you feel like it and make your own beep. And people then perceive the beep that they generate to be shifted earlier in mm. time towards the action that made it. Mm. So let's perhaps demonstrate this. If this is the action and this is the beep, mm. people's experience is that the two are shifted closer in time towards each other compared to what you would expect if you just look at the experience of the action alone or the beep alone. So you're saying that the sense of agency changes our perceptions of temporal sequence. That's right. We experience our own actions and the effects of our actions as being very closely linked in time, as being associated in time. So I think what's happening is the brain is putting together those two events, the button press and the beep, and it's not fusing them, but linking them very tightly. And that gives us, I think, this strong experience of I did this and this happened. Now that's fundamental for our ability to, to navigate our world. It's the basis, I think, of technology, for example. So technology is one of the most amazing creations of the human brain. Sure. No other animals have anything quite as sophisticated as our technology. So it's a, a unique cognitive product of our, of our brain, brain evolution. And I think to, to develop technology and to use technology, the 
the human brain has had to evolve this ability to link the actions that we make and really rather arbitrary, secondary, remote consequences that those actions have. There's no real intrinsic connection between <laughs> moving a button on the light switch right, and the right, lights coming on. Right. It's the wonderful things that the electricity company right. and the people who invented right. electricity right. have done to make that uh, link possible. But our brains give us the experience of controlling the whole thing as a single packet. And therefore, this sense of agency is a malleable thing because we can see that the the mental perceptions of the time is is movable. That's right. And so that reflects on the whole sense of agency of what it's about. It's not this rigorous, absolute thing that's happening, but it it has to do with the with the the way the brain is organizing the process. Absolutely. And therefore, you're saying that, therefore, that gives us a, uh, a deeper understanding of what the sense of agency is all about. I think that's right. I think the sense of agency is learned, perhaps will be another way uh, to put, uh, <laughs> to uh, put that. Mm, because mm. I think that our brain is monitoring constantly the relationship between what we do and what happens. And that's helpful because that reinforces the fact that we are able to do things. It allows us to learn to do new things right, right, and right. to do things which are amazingly arbitrary. So one of the things that surprises me about uh, the creativity of human intelligence is just how many things a simple mm -hmm. manual action can now allow us to do. Mm -hmm. So you can listen to whatever music you like, you can change your environment, you can achieve a lot of things by a simple action. And my feeling is that this is really a development of a very basic capacity that animals have also, which is called instrumental learning. So the rat right. will learn that pressing the lever will produce right. the food or, or, or give it uh, water. And once you have the ability to associate your own actions with their consequences, then you have an, a really promising capacity mm. to learn that you can change your own environment to get what you want. How do we then make the link between the sense of agency as a result and our sense of free will which initiates the process? Okay, so I think there is a link between the sense of agency and volition. I don't know about free will, but mm. certainly volition. Because in the experiments that we did on this temporal shrinkage mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the button press and the beep, we made the quite interesting finding that you only get this temporal binding, as we called it, if you made the button press with a voluntary action in the first place. Because we had a quite interesting control condition using a, a technique called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Tra transcranial magnetic stimulation is a way to make people move involuntarily yeah. against their will, if you like by holding a magnetic coil immediately over the motor areas of the brain, which control the contralateral side of the body. So if you uh, discharge the uh, a capacitor into a magnetic coil held over the motor cortex of the left hemisphere, the magnetic field will pass through the scalp and through the skull, and it will depolarize, it will trigger electrical activity in the motor neurons of the brain immediately underneath. And that activity will then be conducted down the spinal cord and will cause a little involuntary twitch of the muscles of the And you right correlate hand. that with this. Uh, and that is exactly in the same muscles as the yeah. person used in our main experimental condition to press the button themselves. So what we could do in our control condition is we could make them move and then play the beep 250 mm. milliseconds later. And then you don't get this temporal association. Uh, in fact, the brain's trying to keep those two things apart right. and it experiences a separation in time between the little twitch that we impose. Because it knew that's not my volition. It's not me, it's not yeah, me. Right. So when we impose an involuntary movement on the participant with transcranial magnetic stimulation and follow that involuntary movement by a beep a quarter of a second later, then we don't get any of this temporal mm. shrinkage. And in mm. fact, we get a bit of temporal repulsion as if the brain's trying to keep the two things apart. That's not me, that's not my volition. It's no. not me, yeah. I'm not the agent. I didn't make that beep. <laughs> So what this suggests to me is that the, the voluntary processes of preparing and developing and deciding to make the action, they are very closely linked to the sense that my actions have effects in the outside world and give me control mm. over what happens. Mm.